The Mystic Spear Hand is absolutely broken in Dragon's Dogma 2, as you can send enemies flying, nuke large monsters, you have a shield that makes you unkillable for a short time, and an amazing ultimate that summons a magical clone of yourself. Got many tips, but first there is something very interesting about how you unlock the vocation. So you might already know that after completing the Beast Culling quest for Captain Brand in Vernward, you can take the North Vernward Oxcart back to Melf, where you will encounter a dragon. You can't just fight it in a normal way and then unlock the mystic spear hand by talking to the vocation maester Sigurd afterwards. But alternatively, you can actually kill the dragon during this quest and get an insanely powerful weapon and the class ultimate early on. Shout out to Moxie for this tactic by the way, link to his channel will be in the video description. So you want to run past the dragon, deeper into town and climb to the top of the watchtower where you will find a giant ballista. Now you can push it into position yourself, but if you jump behind the thing to take control, your pawn will do the work for you. We only need to hit the dragon a couple of times, three in my case, so hold down the fire button to draw the string on the ballista. The further you draw it, the further the projectile will travel before dropping off, so you want to make sure it's almost fully drawn before you let go to shoot it. After hitting it enough times, you will gain a ton of experience and are immediately placed next to the dragon and Sigurd. He will talk to you to offer you the vocation, and if you talk to him again immediately after, he also gives you the spear hand's ultimate ability Wild Fury. Then loot the dragon to get the Dead Ringer weapon, which is one of, if not the strongest weapon for the spear hand in the game, giving you 680 strength and 587 magic damage even without any upgrades. And don't worry if you've already unlocked the spear hand by the way, as you can still earn the ultimate and the Dead Ringer by going to the Dragon's Breath Tower in Batal over here on the map. This is where both the dragon and Sigurd have moved to after Melf, so lead him through the dungeon, kill the dragon here and grab your rewards. And regardless of whether you grab it early in your playthrough or later, Wild Fury is an awesome ability. It's basically an insane new combo that again summons a magic clone that mimics all your attacks. The first attack doubles as a gap closer so you can use it to engage enemies from a distance. Each attack costs stamina so you want to manage that carefully but the damage is insane and it's also one of the most badass looking combos in the game. And there is a way to make it even better which I will go over in a moment. Because while the spear hand has access to some amazing weapon skills, your core skills offer you a very powerful combo too. Although in order to access this, you need to have the quick foot skill unlocked, luckily that already happens on the second level of the vocation. This skill allows you to immediately blink to a target struck by a charged magic bolt, so the one you fire by holding R1 or RB. These bolts are useful because they slow enemies, but they also leave them staggered, meaning you can blink in and instantly trigger a finisher with triangle or Y. This is often enough to kill regular enemies outright and since it costs no stamina you can immediately charge up the next bolt to blink to and insta kill a new target. And the bolt blink combo is also useful against bosses as you often blink up into the air making climbing a tall creature to hit the weak spot much easier. And we will by the way have more class guides and tips to help you take down these dangerous creatures and do more amazing things in the game so subscribe to not miss those and leave a like if you enjoyed the video so far. But yeah even with just the core skills you get a ton of mobility and damage potential and that only increases when you unlock winding cut at rank 4. This unlocks a new attack that triggers if you rapidly press the attack button where you keep twirling your duo spear until you stop pressing the button. The move will finish with a powerful overhead slam which is a longer animation so it can leave you a bit vulnerable if you're not careful about when you end it. But on a downed monster or a slow enemy you can just keep outputting damage as again this is just a regular ability with no stamina cost meaning you can and keep it going as long as you want to and spam it as often as you'd like. And it of course becomes even better if you have a mage in the party who can also buff up your weapon with elemental damage. Personally though, I'm just very happy we get another lawnmower build in a new game. If you know, you know. But the real star of the show are the Mystic Spearhand's weapon abilities and while there are some very powerful offensive ones, I think the ability everyone should have in their build is the defensive mirror vesture. This ability unlocks at vocation level 3 and summons a magic shield around you and nearby allies and while it only lasts a short while it practically makes you invulnerable. Like most attacks don't even stagger you and you can make it even better by upgrading into mirror shield to increase the duration of the shield and the casting range so you can reach more allies. The stamina cost for it isn't high either so you can easily reapply it multiple times during a fight. Again the short duration means you do want to time it right but popping this when you need to go for a palm revive practically means you don't need to worry about anything 
everything else. This skill has been an absolute lifesaver in some of my fights against bigger monsters, and it's definitely one of the reasons why the spear hand has been my favorite vocation so far. But there are more amazing weapon skills on this vocation, including one that practically turns you into a Sith Lord. I mean, we already had the hood and the dual bladed weapon, but with humble offringe, we can also add a force throw to that list. This ability automatically grabs nearby objects and hurls them at a nearby enemy. The fun thing is though that most regular enemies also count as an object, meaning you can play bowling with a pack of goblins. Now obviously this makes the ability less useful in a boss fight unless you have some throwables lying around, but it is incredibly effective against many of the smaller foes you run into while roaming around. Plus it's just a fun ability that lets you throw around some enemies, so what's not to love? Upgrading it to Devout Offringe increases the range of the grab, meaning you can pick things up from further away. And if you really want to go overboard with throwing your enemies around, you definitely want the Unto Sky ability and its upgrade Unto Heaven. While not the most useful skill, using your spear as a baseball bat to home run an enemy is pretty badass and something you want to try at least once. But arguably, the most useful skill in the Spearhead's arsenal is Theft's Haunt, which allows you to hit an enemy and repeatedly press the button to drain their health and use it to regain your stamina. The damage isn't great and you need to be pretty close to a target, so on first glance it's not that useful of a spell. But with Wild Fury having such a massive stamina cost for the full combo and other powerful moves in your arsenal of course costing stamina as well, having a way to quickly regain that resource is super useful. So when your stamina is about to run empty, hit an enemy with this skill to drain it back up to full and then you can reapply your shield, redo your Wild Fury combo, drain some more stamina and rinse and repeat until you win the fight. Again by itself the move isn't much but since it allows you to pretty much spam your empowered ultimate combo it's absolutely worth adding to your loadout. Upgrading it to Ravener's Haunt allows you to recover your stamina even quicker so definitely grab the upgrade as well once it becomes available at vocation level 5. And those three skills so Wild Fury, Mirror Shield and Ravener's Haunt are what make up most of my active skill set as you can of course only have four weapon skills equipped at a time. I use the final slot to swap out some abilities depending on what I think is fun or useful but most of the time it's occupied by Sky Dragoon's Fangtooth, a counter ability that lets you leap up into the air to dodge an attack then slam back down with the spear. The damage of the attack is increased if you actually dodge an enemy strike with it so it's a really cool and satisfying counter to pull off. But it also has a second benefit against some of the larger creatures you come across as the leap up can often help you get onto a monster's back as well giving you an easy way to keep hitting them or climb up to a weak spot. And to wrap things up each class of course also has a couple of augments that can be used on any vocation and the spear hand has two that are very useful to have in your arsenal. The first is polarity which unlocks at level 6 and increases strength during the day and magic during the night. So on any physical damage class this is going to be very useful when adventuring during the day. But the spear hand especially benefits from polarity as they can also deal magic damage meaning that regardless of which of the two buffs is active they'll always receive some benefit from it. The other really useful augment and the final unlock for the mystic spear hand at vocation level 9 is athleticism. This one is very simple it decreases the stamina cost for sprinting which is amazing as this helps you with both traversal and in combat. Let me know your favorite vocation in the comments leave a like if you enjoyed this one and subscribe as we got more tips and tricks for Dragon's Dogma 2 coming your way. You can also watch our previous video on how to unlock all vocations by clicking on the screen. I will see you in the next one goodbye.